about 10 years ago, there was this whole like trend of social and societal relevance of art and humanities, which also happened in my field. And it was very much like, how can we do things that are useful for precarious groups, for policy making in my field of history also like what is the relevance of your work in societal context that's very much something that was being done 10 years ago and it was very much also done from the ivory towers of academies and universities of like okay we have been doing our work what can we offer back to society like where yeah we have all this knowledge we have all these skills what can we give back i think that was also somewhere in the text like but giving back like it's almost like um, an old-fashioned idea of charity. Like, I have something so I can give to others, but you don't know if they're waiting for it, if you're, they're waiting for your help or waiting for the thing that you want to give, if that's something that they want or need. And it's very much 10 years ago, because we've had all the... So many things have happened in the past two years, specifically, in academic world. Like, we've had Black Lives Matter, we've had Me Too, we've had the whole decolonization discussion, which has become much more central, luckily than before, before it was much more in the margins. Who is in power and who decides and, and who has access to means and who doesn't? We're questioning all these things. What is participation? That's moeilijk. Hè? Um, waarom wil je meedoen of niet meedoen? Ik, voor mij is participatie... Ik ga het weer hebben over iemand die daar blokfluit speelt. Dat kind participeert eigenlijk door het te doen. Hij wil dat gewoon doen, hij wil dat ook. Ga je daar met de bakstenen op, de, op, de, op het plein een hele grote muur, dan komen de kinderen help, weer met mijn bakstenen. Um, ik moest opruimen. Ik heb gewoon gezegd tegen kinderen, kom, gaan we dat allemaal samen opruimen en heel mooi op mijn karreke leggen. Oh ja, kijk hoe. Die hebben een kwartiertje allemaal met mij de, de bakstenen terug mooi gelegd. Dat is participeren. Ik heb niemand aangetrokken. Ik, ik was daar op het wijkfeest met, met uh, popcorn en van alles. En ik heb gewoon mijn bakstenen naast elkaar gelegd en zelf een labyrint beginnen maken. Ik ben niet gaan zoeken naar kinderen. Kom jij eens met mij een bak? Nee, die komen vanzelf. En omdat ik dat niet graag doe, uh, ik, ik ben zo geen entertainer. <laughs> <laughs> maar dus dat, is, dat gaat eigenlijk automatisch. Als je iets cool doet, dan komen mensen naar jou. Mm-hmm. I think this is a very tricky discussion. It's a good one, it's an important one, but this discussion of privilege and power, and especially in the theatrical, I would now really go specific towards the theater scene or sector in Brussels is problematic as a whole. Um, I can say that because I work with youngsters who would not feel like they're welcome or needed anywhere. So um, to fight for a place in this sector when you're not part of, I would say, this type of demographic is virtually impossible. There are a couple of projects here and there that kind of facilitate a discussion at least about this, this problem, but not enough. This thing about your own privilege, this is a thing, this is a work that takes years for the most people. People who grew up with this and haven't seen anything else, it will not take a, a few weeks transversal atelier to be able to change their mind. This is a work that needs to be ongoing and in a broader sense also in the education itself. As long as in the education itself there is no reflection on how should we do this differently, you can't expect this transversal atelier to give you all that or to give the students all that. I agree, it's a good place to, to, to start that conversation, but we also shouldn't be unrealistic. 